Welcome to Laravel Microservice Summary for Week 3. So this one, the theme of this one has really been all about data. Uh, what we've wanted to do, or the end goal, has been to be able to populate a subscription DTO with the correct data. And some of that data has come direct from a webhook payload, but some of it we've had to use some of the information in that webhook payload in order to look up in a database and retrieve some information that way. And so, sounds like it's not a lot of work, but at the end of it, including the testing, including creating database seeders and everything, has been quite a lot of work, roughly about 10 videos. And so, this is what we've covered. Um, We've covered the Google subscription DTO, um, database schema and lookup data, migrations, model attribute casting. That's pretty cool. I'll show you that in a moment. Seeding a database and seeding a test database. And then uh, factory classes. So not the factory classes as in the ones that are provided by Laravel for database stuff, but actually creating our own factories for uh, things like the Google subscription DTO, uh, refactoring for testability. You'll like that one. That one's pretty cool. Some stuff on custom exceptions and then a bit of testing to round it off. Unit testing mainly and testing using um, doubles, using mocks and also testing that expected exceptions are thrown. So let's have a quick uh, whiz through this. So the subscription DTO is this. Uh, as you can see, quite a few properties which we need to populate, which are important to um, this application. And what I've also done is I've included comments to say where this data can be retrieved from. So some of it can be retrieved directly off the Google uh, webhook payload, which looks kind of like this. But some of it has also needed to come from the database. And so those ones are these ones here. So the event name and the category, we've needed to take some of this information here in order to perform a lookup. So that's what really brings us on to database migrations. And really we've just created some read models in order to just look up in the database and read some static data really. It's not stuff which is dynamic or which is going to change and so for that, we created some database migrations, but we also created our model. So two models, uh, not overly complex. The most interesting one will be the subscription event one. So usual stuff, did the fillable properties, but also when casting for the category, because it's a small closed set of categories, what I actually used there was an enum. And so by using the Laravel uh, casts property here, what will happen is that that category, when it comes back from the database, it will be cast to an enum. And so that is that enum here. And um, it just does what enums do, really. It gives you that close set, and we're able to sort of check that the values that we're getting do fall in that close set. Okay, and then we get on to seeding the database. So if you've done this before, inside of database, uh, we created some seeders just using a couple of Laravel commands. And so you have the main seeder, which gets called when you run the command php artisan db seed. But inside of that run method, you can also say, okay, I want you to call the run method on these classes as well. And so we provided our own custom seeders for seeding two tables in the database. So that one's fairly straightforward. And then we have the subscription event seeder. And we just populated the database with static data. So like I say, this is just lookup data. It's not going to change. And so seeders are perfect for this kind of thing. You can run them when you're deploying your app or in development, run them and just seed your database with the data it's going to need in order to function. And so we did that, but then we also wanted to seed the test database, but only for the feature tests. And so the way I did that, because I'm using PEST in this course, is in the PEST.php file, what this code here does is it just, it's an, an extension for PEST and we're saying in the feature tests, so the ones that fall in the feature folder and are really sort of our end-to-end -end kind of application tests, I want to run this trait, refresh 
database. So for each test, the database starts in a consistent and uh, fresh starting state. But also, before we run each test, we just want to seed the database with that seed data so that in testing, in feature testing, we have a similar kind of environment as what we do for development. Okay, and then we came on to factory classes. So I created a class called subscription factory. And this is the responsibility of this, one responsibility, and that is to take some information, take a webhook and use the information contained in that webhook in order to produce an instance of the Google subscription. And so, as you can see, some of the data is able to come straight from the webhook, but also some of it we have used to perform a lookup. And what I did here was, rather than drop the code which interacts with the database directly in here, I injected a repository. And so what that means is in the unit tests, I don't have to interact with the database for real. What I can do is inject a mock repository when I'm instantiating my subscription factory in my subscription factory test. I use a mock repository and just say, okay, when we call this particular method, find notification type, then just return me a pre, sort of pre-built subscription event. And so that was the subject of that lesson, really. So what I did initially is I started out with this code here inside the factory and then went through a few refactoring steps. So it'll show you how to do a refactoring quite cleanly. Um, went through a few refactoring steps and moved it into this repository, which could then be injected into the factory. Then we do some stuff on custom exceptions. So I created our own webhook exception. And this is more really for just typing. So we can look, look out or listen out for webhook exceptions being thrown. As you can see, didn't add any properties or any methods to that. It's just so I can check for a particular type of exception when we come to our error handling. And then I've just finished off not long before I recorded this by uh, writing a unit test subscription factory test, uh, which one happy path case, creates a subscription DTO successfully. So as you can see, that is where I create that mock repository and use that instead of a real repository. And so we're just testing that. The create method on the subscription factory produces a subscription. And so that's happy path, but then you've also got to test for when things don't quite work. And so we're testing also that a webhook exception is thrown if a subscription event is not found. And so that is what is happening down here. So all the setup fairly similar to the other test, but then we are just checking that if we call uh, create, but the data in the webhook is not able to successfully perform a lookup in the database, then we should expect a webhook exception to be thrown. And so that kind of wraps it up for this week. And that wraps up that section. That whole section has been about um, getting the data or being able to produce a subscription object. And so what we need to do now, now that we're able to do that, if we go to our Google webhook handler, is what we're going to do in the next one. And what we'll be covering in the next summary is we're going to take this subscription now. And what we want to do is map the data to the format which is expected by the receiving platform. In our case, our sort of imaginary uh, custom relationship management platform called Audience Grid. Get that subscription mapped to a format which is expected by that uh, platform. And then we need to forward it using our HTTP client, which we had a look at in the last one. So hopefully you've enjoyed the summary. I'll leave a link to the course uh, at the end of the video and also in the description, and I'll see you in the next summary.